The 1800s were a time of great change for the world, especially in the industrial sector. The Industrial Revolution is responsible for many great things, but also the beginning of humans mistreating the environment and over the years creating harmful pollution. Today it's important for everyone to reduce their carbon footprint. That's why today we are proud to say this video is sponsored by REN. REN is a website where you can calculate your carbon footprint, then offset it by funding a diverse mix of carbon reduction projects like tree planting, mineral weathering, and rainforest protection. By answering a few questions about your lifestyle, you can find out about your carbon footprint and how to reduce it. No one can reduce their carbon footprint to zero, so you can offset what you have left after reducing. Once you sign up to make a monthly contribution to offset your carbon footprint, you receive monthly updates from the projects you support. You get to see what your money is spent on with photos and details of every tree planted, every acre reforested, and every ton of carbon offset. Just like one of Ren's newest projects, Biochar. This project helps prevent wildfires in California's old growth forests by removing dead and flammable trees. They then use a cutting edge process to turn the tree's biomass into biochar, keeping carbon out of the air for thousands of years. So offset your carbon footprint on REN. The first 100 people to sign up using the link in the description will have 10 extra trees planted in their name. Now back to the juicy history facts. Top 10 messed up things that happened in the 1800s. Number 10, the Corsican Ogre. It's kind of hard to believe that in the same century Napoleon Bonaparte was tearing apart Europe, it was also the same century that would give us the steam train, telegraphs, telephones, and the first automobile. For me, just always kind of a weird thought, but back to the monster that was Napoleon, in his early days his military prowess spoke for itself. Seriously, this guy was... This guy was good. During the coalition wars, he stuck it to multiple empires at once, which in case you were wondering, isn't easy to do, and at such a young age, very impressive. His tactics saw him through multiple wars and created a lot of enemies. Eventually, this bravado would go directly to his cerebral cortex as he became in charge of France and declared himself emperor. France was still going through some political strife after the revolution. A man that once stood for freedom and the ideas of the French Revolution started slipping, and the people of France would feel the effects. His tyrannical reign wouldn't last long as after a few more tries, the rest of Europe caught up with the man who was average height for the time. Number 9, The War of 1812 America was a rather new country. After winning their war for independence against Great Britain, a brand new nation was taking shape. However, there was still a heavy British influence just north of the colonies in a little place called Canada. There was still somewhat of a mess from the American Revolution, and while not boiling with political strife, it was enough to start a war with Great Britain again. Canada had some juicy and ripe land for the taking. Manifest destiny, right? Well, like a friendly game of Mario Party, the war quickly turned sour. There were losses on both sides, but perhaps the biggest loss was those of the Indian tribes who were pitted against each other. Andrew Jackson unalived so many British soldiers he rose to prominence, and Canadians, not liking where the White House was, burnt it down. After all this, not much changed. The lines on the map pretty much stayed the same, and the British slowly became one of America's best allies, besides the Great White North, of course. Number 8, The American Civil War. Some historians would call this the defining moment of the nation, brother against brother, one trying to keep the Union in peace, and the other fighting for naughty reasons. You bah, naughty. A brutal conflict that would see the destruction of many lives and horrors. From the cannons firing on Fort Sumter to the Battle of Gettysburg, one man with a lacking beard and overcompensating top hat had to keep the whole thing together. The war stretched on for a few years before the South could no longer hold out. What was Lincoln's reward for keeping that country intact? Well, he was shot while watching a play. Darn. The next decades of America's history would be that of rebuilding, especially since those that were once emancipated were now free. Number 7, Spanish-American War. Lots of wars on this list, but here we are. The US in the late 1800s was starting to become a major player on the world stage, but their path to the dark side was not yet complete. The very nation that had fought imperialism to become free was about to imperialize some other nations. After noticing that Europe was tearing apart Africa like a fat kid does to a Kit Kat bar wrapper, they knew that they wouldn't find their imperial gold mine there. However, after gaining territory from Mexico in 1848, it was clear that perhaps they could take smaller Spanish lands in the Americas. So, after the battleship Maine sank in the Havana Harbor, after an explosion that was most likely caused by an accident, it was blamed on Spain. And so America's first foreign war with someone besides Britain had commenced, and they did pretty well, actually. The sphere of American influence lasted years, and they even got the Philippines. So, huge win there, that's a big win. Very nice, I like. 
Number six, tech boom. Sort of a broad stroke here, but still, it's it's really messed up when you actually think about it. The late 1800s especially were a time of great scientific knowledge and learning. Lots of new inventions seemed to be popping up left and right. However, for my fellow gamer fans out there, specifically Battlefield 1, you know how crazy military technology got. A lot of unique items, vehicles, and weapons featured in that game all have their roots in the 1800s. Which to me was always so fascinating about history. How can we come so far and come up with so many different ways to hurt one another? But if I was going to be specific, for example, a musket from 1860 does not shine a light to the rifles of 1890. They're just totally different things. 30 years may be a decent amount of time, but the jump between the two is quite significant. Then again, remember what cell phones looked like 30 years ago? Yeah. Just wasn't the same. Never understood how people carried those brick cell phones around. They're huge, like this big. And just like, you guys going out later? You got like, what is it, 1G? Like, what the heck? That's so stupid. That's dumb. That's just dumb. You need a backpack to carry it. Number five, the Klondike Gold Rush. Canada didn't have an Old West like the US did. There just weren't any shootouts happening in the desert with spurred boots and a band of crooks talking about moving to Tahiti. However, after gold was discovered in the Yukon, a whole slurry of prospectors and folks hoping to find their gold fortune made their way up to the Great white north. Dawson City went from a population of 500 to over 30,000 in a short few years. It was just the kind of town you think it was, saloons and all, and maybe a building or two where uh, well, you could purchase a service from the woman of the evening who, who resides there. You know what I'm talking about. Sadly, the towns on cleanliness would see disease move in as well. Some got sick, some got rich, some went broke, and some went home. That's just how the gold rush went. Number four, cowboys. It wouldn't be a list about the 1800s if I didn't get to talk about cowboys. Now would it? Why the life of cowboys wasn't exactly as you would see in the movies and in Red Dead Redemption, every once in a while things got a little out of hand. Like the OK Corral, probably one of the most infamous shootouts in American history. A shootout between Virgil Earp and the cowboys, or so they were called, a group of outlaws that had a feud with the Earp boys. Taking place in the appropriately named Tombstone, Arizona, couldn't be any better honestly. It was an example of how even though there was law and order out in the frontier of the Old West, it was still a breeding ground for unsavory types of characters. In the end, the lawmen were injured and some outlaws went the way of Texas Red. Funny enough, actually, the story didn't gain a lot of fame until the 1930s, when a book was written about the event. Who knew? Number three. I got black lung, Dutch. <laughs> Dutch. The saddest moment of my gaming career was watching a rough and tough, rugged cowboy come to terms with his past as an all too common disease ruins him from the inside. It's so sad. Despite Dutch and his gang, sickness was very common back then, and the survivability of said sicknesses was not great. Cholera, typhoid, yellow fever, scarlet fever, tuberculosis, and if you've played Oregon Trail, Dysentery. It was just a time when there wasn't a cure for such ailments, and the funny thing about diseases is they don't discriminate. You could be the poorest farmhand in the country or an oil baron's son. Sure, the wealthy might have a better chance of not getting sick, but if you catch it, well, partner, your days are numbered and you're going to be in a whole lot of trouble. I'd love to read the side effects of all these lovely illnesses, but I know people eat while they watch these videos, so I'll spare you. Enjoy your meal. Number two, beta prohibition. While the ban on selling and consumption of alcohol was the defining moment of America in the 1920s, the prohibition movement did not start overnight and has its roots in the 1800s. The consumption of alcohol has been a thing since the beginning of time and most likely will be till the end of time. In the late 1800s, drinking in America was becoming an issue. A lot of men were hitting the sauce too hard, spending money they didn't have, and spending time they didn't have away from their families. The mistreatment of women and wives was the next natural progression of that. So some of the first anti-salooners were women, simply looking out for them and their families. Sadly, the movement would be taken in drastic different avenues and eventually the alcohol was banned outright. Just as an FYI, the fifth largest industry at the time was the alcohol industry and a disturbing amount of the government's tax revenue came from such. Why was there so much drinking you might ask? I'm not an expert. but. Chew on this. Right now, if I looked in your fridge, what would I find? Oh, you're almost out of eggs, by the way. I'm just saying. I would find one to two fruit juices, some dairy yogurt drinks maybe, or maybe even a couple of soft drinks. Those are all things people just didn't have in their fridge back then because, well, there wasn't fridges and those drinks just weren't around back then. No variety. And to be honest, whiskey is shelf life stable for a long time. 
That's <laughs> just how it goes. Number one, the Boxer Rebellion. To make a long story short, China in the late 1800s was having a rough time. Usually, when a country has an imperial power looming over them like an essay due at 8 a.m. and you haven't started and it's 3 a.m., it's usually only one or two foreign powers at most. China, however, had the unique experience of having eight foreign powers with their own spheres of influence and imperialism. Safe to say, this wasn't fun, so people began to revolt. The foreign power sent soldiers to quell the Red Hot Rebellion. Why the Boxer Rebellion? Well, because the rebels were well trained in martial arts. And in English at the time, that was called Chinese boxing. Which looking back, might be the most British thing I've ever heard. It was a very messy and bloody revolution. That's gonna wrap it up for me today guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you too want to fight off the foreign powers of imperialists, then check out my socials linked down below. I've been your host, Big Ched, and stay sweet my little honeybees.